Welcome back everybody, my name is Altamar and we will be continuing our side quest adventure. Where we left off last time, we had saved a boy at a lighthouse from some wargs, we had killed some mages and some sirens, we had also found a hidden pirate treasure cave, and it had a few flesh golems inside, which we killed and got some loot. The first thing we're going to do now, before continuing on with our adventures, is get rid of all of Zara's magic missile spells and give him a whole bunch of identify spells. The reason for this is we did find a manual amongst the treasure in this pirate cave and this book is one of those tomes that allow you to increase your stats permanently so I want to identify and learn that quickly just to see what it is. In addition Dorn is looking a little worse for the wear so we should probably rest before moving on. He has exactly one hit point left right now, so he was lucky to survive the flesh golems. We also gained some levels. I should do that as well. Uh, so Vicania leveled up. She got level 2 and level 3 spells. And some hit points and some lore. It looks like Montaron gained a fighter level. So did he get anything? Not really. He got a Thacko reduction and some hit points. That's about it. I'll bring everyone back down here, we'll take a quick nap, we'll do some identifying, and then we will move on with our adventures. Go on, man. Ooh, that's not good. Chattering of... Oh, there's a carrion crawler that interrupted our sleep. Let's kill that really quickly. Get some experience, and go back to bed. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to give this manual, and I guess this rope, to Zara. Oh. I should have just given the manual to Zara, apparently, but... So that is the two-handed sword plus three berserking that we picked up from Brage. Braj? I think it's Braj. That is what made him go insane, and then we killed him, so... I'm going to give Zara this... So we found a manual of bodily health, which is, uh, I believe, a constitution bonus. So we're going to give that to our main character. And as I might have mentioned before, you want to give all of those books to your main character and no one else. Though it might seem more beneficial to give, say, the intelligence one to Edwin or Zar to boost their spellcasting ability, it does not carry through to the next game if you give it to them. Even if you find Edwin in the second game and recruit him into your party, he will not have the plus one intelligence bonus that you gave him in the first game. So it's better off just give all of the books to your main character. My character now has 20 constitution, which gives him 65 hit points. That's actually a fair amount of hit points for his level, especially. I believe he has the most hit points in the group. Yes, it looks like he has the hit points of approximately two to three group members, which is actually quite impressive. Now as we wait to wander across the wilderness towards the zone exit, I'm just going to go briefly over where we're going to be going. Um, there is one wilderness area we will be skipping. It is the area with a certain Dark Elf Ranger that I may have mentioned before. The reason we are skipping that is we do want to try and kill him at some point in time. So I want to get a couple more levels under our belt before we make that attempt. He is a very difficult fight. Other than that, we're just going to wander through all of the areas, do all the quests really quickly. Um, it shouldn't take very long for the next couple areas. There isn't a whole lot inside of them. And then once we're done with them, we will continue uh, with the bandit camp. And finally, we will do the Cloakwood and then Baldur's Gate. So we're going to go to this area here. And in this area, we're going to head off and find a couple of things to do. Apparently, we found a cave bear who's not very happy. That fight was almost unbearably easy. See what I did there? I. Uh, 
It's early in the morning. Cut me some slack on uh, the terrible jokes. All right, where are we at? Speak up. We found a man named Kizik and looks like three ghouls. Kizik says, "No, stay back, lest this madness be catching." I have heard that diseases of the mind are even more contagious than those of the flesh. Leave me be. No, I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna say, "Calm down." What is this madness of which you speak? I have been a rural merchant all my life, and I am thereby no stranger to poultry of any shade or color. But there be there be a fiendish hen to the east that, when I picked her up, spoke to me in a voice most human. Either I am in the chill grips of the deepest fever, or that chicken be possessed by a spirit from the very depths of the ninth and final hell. So we now know about a weird talking chicken. We're gonna go find that chicken. Sorted. Uh, looks like there is a couple of spells here. Let's see what they are. We found a resist fear spell. We'll give that to Edwin. Ah, oh, he succeeded. That's amazing. We also found a, a luck spell. That looks like it's interesting. But of course we failed, so I guess it won't be that interesting for us anyways. Let's see if we can get rid of some things in our inventory here. Zar has too much junk. We're gonna sell the belt of gender changing. There's no real need to have it. And now we have a wand of magic missiles. And I'm going to identify this cloak. Just because I have no idea what it does. Oh, I guess I'm out of identify spells. I guess I will not be identifying that cloak just yet. I don't remember what it does. I think it is a cloak of shape shifting, but I'm just not 100% sure. Let's go find us a talking chicken. I believe it's up here somewhere. There's a wolf here, apparently. Alright, that was pretty easy. There's a chicken. It's coming towards us. Thank you, Cluck. You have saved Cluck. Me. Uh, I'm going to say, forsooth, methinks you are no ordinary talking chicken. I certainly hope you are Cluck, jesting with me. I am indeed no ordinary talking chicken, and I am in need of your Cluck help. Uh, my apologies, good um, chicken. What has caused your current accursed state? Thank the Cluck, mother of all magic. Perhaps now I might find an end to this cluck adventure. I am Melkamp of Varagost, a cluck mage adept in the mystical arts. A uh, misread incantation seems to be cluck, the source of my troubling form. It has been over a month since I cluck uttered a polymorph spell, and can and I simply cannot return to my normal cluck form. Um, I have passing knowledge of magery. Can you not dispel this uh, foul condition? <laughs> that was a good joke. I like that. I would, but dispel is beyond my, or rather exhausted my cluck, memorized spells earlier, and now I cannot access my spellbook. Have you a member of your party, the cluck ability to cast such a spell? Um, it's a spell neither I nor my comrades can cast at this time. Is there another way I might assist you? Blast it all. Well, there is nothing else I cluck can do except my most hated option. There is a tower directly west of cluck Baragos, about which I can find, or about which can be found the mage Thalantir. I am his apprentice, and I am certain he will cluck aid me. Then to his abode we shall go. I will escort you. Thank you. It's located just to the west of Baragost. Thalantir lives in a large manor there. I'll just nestle in your pack until we get there. We now have a chicken in our bag. Who has the chicken? Oh, it looks like a Dorn has picked up the chicken. You right. Go on. Right. What's this then? So we will be bringing the chicken to get some help. I guess. I'm not really sure if that's something an evil party would do. But it is something that a Eltimar would do for some experience. I do want to hit level 6 as fast as possible. And I don't think we get any reputation for it. And I believe there's a reward in it for us. Looks like some more ghouls to fight. That uh, Harrower plus one is a pretty good longsword for taking down ghouls. 
You. I'm on it. I believe there is something to do around here. I just cannot remember exactly where. You oh, there we go. Quiet. You surrender or you die. You make choice and you make choice quickly. Zargul has no patience to wait for slow-witted city folk. All right, time to die, you ugly hobgoblins. Or is it, yeah, knob goblins. You very stupid for city folk. You die screaming, Zargul's strongest one there is. We'll see about that. I don't really believe that uh, Zargul is that particularly strong. So we will kill him. I'm actually going to get Dorne to take on Geltek there. Don't want him firing arrows at us non-stop. Oh, looks like he's trying to run away. Wait, wait, get back here. Don't run. Just accept your death, damn it. Footy says, shh, I'm spying on Basilisk and his spooks. They're funny. I've never heard of a funny spook before. Why are they so funny? Basilius keeps on telling these stories about how happy he was as a child, but all the spooks just kind of moan and mumble and stuff, like they're not really listening. That's what my brother Johnny used to do before he disappeared. Mumble like that when he wasn't really listening. You stay here. I'm going to go tell my friend Nettie about this place. She'll think it's really funny, what with her daddy gone and all. The kid may not understand what's funny and what's not. If this goblin goes much further this way, we're going to have to abandon course. We do not want to be entering the skeleton area just yet. That is where Basilius is, and he is, um, if you'll recall from when we first went to Baragost, he's wanted for a bounty. And it appears that there might be a good reason for that, as he is surrounded by corpses. Oh good, we found some wolves now too. Fear is an it's a very annoying ability, because they just run around endlessly. But it looks like we finally caught up to him, and it looks like he's trapped inside this corner. So let's finish him off. Oh, finally. He has a short sword plus two, it looks like. That'll be a useful sword for Monteron, kind of, although he never enters melee. We'll be giving it to him anyways. Alright, there are a couple ways you can take down Basilius. The best one is to convince him that you are his parents and we'll get rid of all of his skeletons. Which is kind of important. He's one of the few voice acted people I see. The zombie replies, uh... Basilisk then says, oh, don't hesitate on my account. Some of the others may not have heard them. <sighs> Hold your peace then, though I remember a time back at Zentil Keep when you would sooner die than be quiet. You would sooner, um, I'll wait until you feel like talking or telling them yourself. I don't remember the old days so well, I'm going to say. You there, what is the meaning of this? Who dares interrupt while I speak with my family? I'll have your heads if you're here to harm the- No, it cannot be. Is that you, father? It cannot be otherwise. You have not changed a bit in all these years. I'm going to say- Ah, uh, yes, son. It certainly has been a long time. How are you doing, my boy? About as well that can be expected, I guess. It has been difficult, but I've got most of my family back together. Some did not seem to recognize me at first, but I helped them to recall. I'm going to say, no matter. I have not seen you since, um, Zentil Keep. Thank the gods we all got out to safety. Yes, though it was frightening for a time, because you thought I was the only one of us that survived. I thought I was the only one who... The only one. You lie. You lie. You cannot be my father because he died when I left the... When I... It is not I who lives, but you yourself. You rob others of their loved ones to replace those you betrayed long ago. No. They lived. All of them. I saved them. And they live. I ran. Dead? All dead? It isn't true. It cannot be. You lie. You will die for slighting my memory. So all of the undead actually die now. I think we got rid of his spell, which actually makes this fight a lot easier. I think it's Hold Person. It is a Hold Person spell. But that's okay. We actually made it through the fight well enough. He's got some gauntlets, a Warhammer. I believe it's a Warhammer plus two. 
and we have his holy symbol which we will be returning for the um, bounty on his head at the temple just to the east of Baragost I believe unfortunately now we have to wait for a little bit until this whole person spell wears off although I think we can rest if it's just hold person, let's find out. Excellent. Alright. We are going to move on. We're actually going to get Zara to identify some more stuff. So there's a cloak called Rilar's Mistake. Um, it is a cloak of the wolf. And it allows you to polymorph into a wolf at will. And its duration is only two turns. I'm going to end up selling that. It's not particularly useful. Um, what do I have for items? I know I picked up some new stuff here. Let's find out what these gauntlets do. They are Alander's go or Gloves of Misplacement. Wow, they are super cursed. Uh, Thacko minus 10, which is really bad. Dexterity minus 2, that is that is terrible. Okay, we are not going to put those on under any circumstances because they are really bad. We found a Warhammer plus 2. Whew, sorry. Named Ashienda, or Ashadina, sorry. It does uh, 2 at armor class 0 of plus 2, and 1d4 plus 3 damage, plus 1 electrical damage. I believe that is slightly better than Vicania's Warhammer, but I really think that her um, stun is much more important. I'm going to leave all the rest of this junk on the ground for now. I'm actually going to be exiting this area out of the northern side of it. I think, hang on, let's just take a quick peek here. I believe the northern side of it is where we'll be going next. I want to uh, do the chicken quest, and it is in an area called High Hedge, just to the north of here. Not to be confused with High Garden, these are not the Seven Kingdoms. Although if they were, that'd be kind of awesome. I think a Game of Thrones game set in the Infinity Engine would actually do very well. Alright, it doesn't look like we're getting out that way. Unfortunately, there are a lot of paths that cut off rather abruptly. These are all unpassable, so... Or impassable, I should say. Unpassable. I speak of the good English this morning. Alright, here we go. This looks like a way out. Ooh, there's a... Zombie. Alright, zombie. Ooh, there's a lot of zombies. Uh, where's my main character? There he is. I require my undead killer to go kill some undead. Oh, don't hit me. I don't have any guns, but it seems that swords work fairly well. And now we are off to High Hedge. There are a few things to do in High Hedge. We'll start off with... Right, Looks like a group of skeletons to kill. Alright. You get back, you get back, you get back. Alright. We'll let uh, Dorn and Eltmar do their thing. Dorn really needs another level. He's got fairly low hit points right now. That's probably because he got two his last level, which was kind of a pitiful level up, but... I'm not in combat, do I? I'm going to kill these bears. They're worth a significant amount of experience, all combined. If I could hit them. There we go. So it's 175 per kill, which means it's about 700 experience. Well, actually it's exactly 700 experience for all four of them. That's as much as most quests will give you, so totally worth killing them. If you come to the side of the of high hedge here. There's a group of three gnolls. They have Purdue's sword. The one that we need for Baragost. So we'll take those guys out. And we'll find the sword in here somewhere. There it is. But I don't have any room in my inventory. We'll give it to Zara to hold on to, I guess. There are um, two more small things to do outside. 
Well, one of them's not really a thing to do. One of them is an NPC character. Kivan is just to the north um, of this place. We don't really need to go talk to him, I guess. But Permidian Stark says, Whoa, slow down. I'm trying to plan the grandest of heists here. With all you're tromping about, I can't hear a word I'm thinking. Of course you can't hear a word you're thinking. You have to say it out loud first. Okay, okay. Here's the plan. There's a big time mage living just over that rise. Magic items scattered all over the place, I'm betting. Trouble is, he's got these two hideous flesh monsters guarding him, and no shadows where I can lurk. Brute force is useless against the monsters, everything is useless. There must be a way to outwit the witless, but damned if I know how. Ah, hell, I guess we'd be better off finding a halfling village somewhere to pick on. This dive is all yours. For those of you who don't know, Permidian Stark is the lesser son of Eddard Stark. He's not really, that was... An absolutely terrible joke. <laughs> Alright, uh, there's a house here. There's nothing really inside of it. Aside from um, one gem, I believe. Dorn, why aren't you up here helping? Probably because I told him not to. Oh, skeletons. More skeletons. Alright, let's see if our, you know, less fighter-driven characters are capable. I'll just start lobbing those around, and I'll get Dorne to go kill them while um, Eltamar takes care of the gnolls. So many skeletons in this place. Okay. So, ooh. Okay. Almost done with the skeletons. Almost lost Monter on there. We're gonna rest before we go inside of High Hedge, but we'll go inside this house really quickly. There's nobody inside. Another knoll. Sometimes the random monster spawning are a little bit annoying. Kinda like a JRPG when you're like just about to get the quest item you need, and then you get like six monster fights in a row. It's a lot like that. I'm gonna save and go find this gem. I think it's in this chest right here. Maybe. Oh, maybe I won't be able to get it. I know that Monteron is not particularly good at opening locks. Okay. We will not be able to get it, and we can't rest inside of here, so let's just leave. We're gonna rest really quickly. Oh, great. Hardly worth my time. I'm actually going to get Edwin to go backwards, and Zara to go backwards. Edwin to go backwards, like I just said. Turn off party AI, because it's annoying. I'm also going to use turn undead. Alright, it looks like our main characters are well on their way to completing this fight. Connie took a bit of a hit there, but she should be okay, I would think. There we go. Anyways, like I was saying, sometimes this game's like a JRPG. Lots of random encounters. And it's usually low-level creatures that you, you just massacre. And unfortunately, their experience isn't worth a whole lot. I guess it's worth a bit. Um, how much were the skeletons worth? Skeletons were worth zero experience, it would appear. But, oh no, wait, there's 65 experience each. That's not too bad, I guess. So this is High Hedge. It is the Wizard's Manor. There are a couple things to do in here. Um, the first off is to kill Flesh Golems. They are awesome. They're automatically hostile to you. Oh, and they hit, like, freight trains. Oh. Right, Dorn get caught on my main character for no reason. Oops, loaded the wrong game. Ah, oh, where's my quick save? There it is. I'm on it. The pathing in this game is a little bit irritating at times. Had Dorn not gotten caught on my main character in a hallway more than large enough for both of them to walk side by side, he wouldn't have died terribly. I'll just use my main character to kill the flesh golems. They are worth 2,000 experience each, which is a considerable amount. Once we have them killed, we're gonna go talk to the wizard that lives here. Also, we're probably gonna have to rest again because my 
main character is about to die again. Um, we will need to talk to him before we do this because he has a chance of actually killing the chicken upon reanimating him to life. He says that I don't have much patience for strangers on my property. Do us both a favor and move along. Unless of course you have magic for sale. From the looks of you, you couldn't afford the items I have for sale. Not true at all, but I'm going to save and talk to him again. I sincerely hope you have some reason for bothering me. I've already stated that I wish you to leave. I'm going to say... Well, it's rather amusing actually. You see, I happen to rescue this, um, talking chicken. Chickens do not talk, so quite obviously it is, polymorphed, or it is a polymorphed being of some kind. Spells such as that wear off after a day, or off, <laughs> that wear off in time can be dispelled. Tis a simple matter and one not worth the waste of my day. Keep moving. Um, I am quite aware of the mute status of chickens, thank you very much. Yes, this is a transformed man, but it is also a man who claims to be your apprentice. This is why I have brought him here. Apprentice? I had no apprentice. I teach no one about what I- wait. Melicamp? Melicamp, is that you? Yes, Master Thalantir, it is Click. I, I am no master to you and you are no apprentice. What gall you have to expect help from me? Um, he is not your student, but you do know him, do you not? A student who wishes to learn, while this fool wishes only to have knowledge. I will tutor no one who does not understand the ramifications of what I teach. Not getting the quick gratification he wished, instead he chose to steal from me. You speak of so much, but show so little. I only wish to click learn a fraction of the power you possess. It has taken me some fifty odd years of life to gain the power I wield, and the will not to use it. But you... You are but a baby in comparison. Frankly, I'm surprised you changed into such an old chicken. How did you manage that, by the by? You were muddling the simplest or you were muddling the simplest cantrip when I last observed you. I have progressed much since then, and I click borrowed a few items to speed the process. As I thought, well it's obvious you steal my tu you can steal my tools, but not my understanding of them. Hold still while I dispel this foolish facade. I can't very well get my property back while it's polymorphed into you. Wait a minute. I did not possess any items that allow the casting of that enchantment. Wait. Oh dear, Malakamp. Listen very carefully. What did you take? Nothing too valuable, I swear. Just some components, a few scrolls, a beat a pair of bracers, a blank spellbook, some parchment, a pair of- Oh no, you little fool. The bracers in my locked and trapped safe. I certainly hope you develop a taste for chicken because you're going to be stuck the way you are for a very long time. I know I stole from you, but you can't leave me like this. Please, Master Thalantir, please, click. It's not a matter of whether I wish to help you or not, simply that I do not have the power to undo what you have done. Is there nothing that can be done? I am willing to help however I can. If you are willing, then I will do what must be done. We will need a component that I do not have on hand, and it will be your job to get it. I will require the head of an undead creature, and a simple skeleton skull will do. Bring it back here, and I will try and bend a few magical rules to reincarnate this foolish boy. Reincarnate, but that spell does not require Cluck, the recipient, to be dead. There must be a dead element, yes, this is what the skull is for. I cannot fully explain what I am to try, but it is something of a reversal on, a, on the reincarnation scheme. The age, of course, the age of the enchantment that changed you may allow for a loophole in the laws of magic. Of course, it may just kill both of us in the casting. Such is life. Off you go to some dungeon or another, return with the skull, go. I believe I still have some skulls on Viconia, so I'm going to talk to him. Hello again, my young adventurers. I see you have the needed component. Well, shall we? If our young man regains his life, he'll eventually... Or... or sorry. Well, shall we see if our young man regains his life, or, he'll, or if he'll eventually be someone's best hall dinner? I guess we'll find out very shortly. It looks like he's returned to life. Excellent. And that is that, or sorry, and that, as they say, is that. I have arms, arms and hands and feet and, and, oh, thank you, Master Thalantir, thank you. Yes, boy, now be quiet a moment, blast it. The bracers are no longer on him. It is as I feared. They have either spent what magic, likely they either spent what magic they had in a single charge, or it is their want to be whisked away after inflicting the damage they do. I had hoped to seal them away, but now it is certain they will fall into the hands of some unfo other unfortunate fool. Tell me, Melicap, do you feel quite yourself again? Hi. I think so. Good. Though it was the greatest of luck you did not retain a wing for a limb. You always were a bit cockeyed, but I suppose that doesn't count. I suggest you remain here, however, so that I might keep an eye on you. If you insist on playing with the forces of magic, at least I should see that you understand 
Perhaps you will be a touch more cautious now that you have sorry, that you have experienced what can go wrong. Yes, Master Thalantir. Sigh, I suppose your master I must be, and you, Altamar, I trust that you will be cautious in your travels as well. I wish you intelligence on your journeys. I would wish you luck, but it runs out much quicker than you would think. Good day. Got a reputation. Gotta go kill some babies now just to get rid of that. I'm going to, um, say, I sincerely, he says, I sincerely hope you have some reason for bothering me. I've already stated that I wish you to leave. I'm going to say, rumors talk of a powerful mage that lives out here. If it is you, I would like to speak with you. Rumors, bah. There is no mage here that wishes to speak or be spoken of. Unless, of course, you have magic that you wish to sell. I do. We are interested in selling or even buying magical items. What do you have? He actually has a lot of magical items, including a potion bag. Which I'm actually going to grab, since we seem to have a million potions. And we're going to just sell a whole bunch of junk. Um, pretty much everything in our inventory. He buys most things, so... That is quite good. Uh, we don't have any of these identified. I'm just going to pay to have them identified. I know that's not really the most cost-effective way to do it, but... It's just quicker than resting and getting... Oh, I didn't identify everything, it looks like. Uh, it's easier than getting Zara to do them all, so... Oops, that was annoying. Okay, sell the flail, sell the potion of fire resistance. Uh, we're going to keep the idol for now. I've actually changed my mind. We might do the fire wine my, er, dungeon, even though I hate it so very much. The reason is there is some, there's a one cool item you can do in there, or you can grab in there, which uh, I'll show you what to do with later. It com er, sorry, it combines with the idol to form a cursed item actually, but a pretty neat one notwithstanding. I'm not going to identify the arrows using the wizard, it's just not worth it. Um, I'm just going to sell all of this junk. And once we're done with that, we're going to buy a couple of things here, I believe. Um, get rid of that. Unfortunately, these cursed bracers are only worth one gold. Kind of sucks a little bit, but we're not going to sell produce short sword. At least the cursed uh, berserker sword is worth 500 gold. Not too bad. We will be identifying the wand. Uh, I think the wand is monster summoning. Yes, it is very important for one of the things we will be doing later on. Um, and what else can we do here? Oops, I didn't actually mean to uh, leave that. We're going to sell all of the gems we've picked up as well. Gems are functionally useless. They don't have any purpose aside from selling for money. So if you get gems, Feel free to sell them all. I'm just going to do this in rows of visible things so I don't have to scroll down. Apparently I had a lot of jewelry on me. There we go. Okay, so we are at 32,000 gold. That is a pretty good amount of gold. Uh, what we are going to be buying here, though, is a... Ro oh, he doesn't have... That's unfortunate. I thought he had a robe of the evil Archmage, but he does not. Anyways, I guess we'll pick up some spells then. So I want to buy some third level spells. I'm going to grab... Actually, I'm going to grab a magic missile. I'm going to grab... Flame arrow. I'm going to grab two flame arrows. One for Mont or one for Zara and one for Edwin. I'm going to grab a... I was kind of hoping he had Fireball, but he does not. That is not the best. I'm going to grab a couple of mirror images as well. All right. Actually, maybe that was a bad idea. No, it's an illusion. So Edwin can learn it. This time before I learn Magic Missile, I'm going to save. I know that other times I just failed and let it go, but I really want Edwin to have Magic Missile. It's extremely useful for him. And I want them both to get level 3 spells. So let's save again. We're going to do Zara's first. Oh, Zara cannot learn illusion spells. Sorry. It's because he is a necromancer. And I guess the opposite school of necromancy is illusion. Right. Okay. So let's try that one more time. Nope. Something Zara is bad at learning spells. He has a 75% chance, so... 
sorted. I'll move a little bit to see if it changes things. There we go. Okay, perfect. Zara now has his spell. And now it is Edwin's turn. I'm going to save. Edwin needs to get Flame Arrow. Excellent. And he needs to get a Mirror Image. Perfect. Um, I'm actually going to save and try for Shocking Grasp as well. Oh, that worked out really well. Okay. Uh, we are pretty much done in this area. I'll show you where Kivan is really quickly in case you want a good Ranger in your group. I'm also going to set... Um, Edwin spells. I'm just going to give him pure magic missiles at this point in the game. And actually, I should have done that first, but whatever. He now has 10 level 1 spells. That's actually quite a few spells. Uh, I'm going to quickly rest right here. Save, rest. Oops, wrong button. Alright. Uh, at this point in the game, there's no time limit on what we're doing, so resting as much as you want is fine. There are some quests that are time sensitive. And if you don't do them in a certain amount of time, you will either fail them, or they will uh, simply become uncompletable. Incompletable? They will not be able to be completed. So there's Kivan there, or Ki yeah, Kivan. He's a ranger. I'm just gonna say, uh, he says, What takes you out this far from civilization? I'm going to reply, uh, we're adventurous, ready to smite any evil that darkens our path. A strange coincidence, I have a quest similar to your own. That really isn't what we were doing, but whatever. I have been hunting the bandits in the region for the past few months. Perhaps if we work together, we would fare better. What do you say to that? Um, I'm going to say, we don't have time to devote to that right now. Perhaps in the future. And then he says, farewell. He is a pretty decent ranger, and if you want uh, a good ranger in your group, take him along. I'm going to end this video right here. We're actually just over the 30 minute mark. Oops, I didn't mean to rest, I meant to save, but whatever. So we're gonna save here, and I will see you guys next time. Anyways, oh uh, sorry, also uh, this is my first let's play, as you may or may not remember, so any suggestions or comments you want to leave below would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, bye for now.